People think it's so alien. This is stuff that's been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Right. It definitely yes. feels alien. Though. Yes. Coral are everywhere on the windward side of Oahu, Hawaii. The reefs dot the turquoise waters of Kiniohe Bay, where the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology's Gates Coral Lab is stationed right on Coconut Island. On a recent cool summer night, beneath the new moon, researchers are busy capturing little coral babies. They want to learn more about these mysterious creatures in hopes of finding the secret to breeding a sort of super coral that will survive the drastically changing climate. Predictions from one study suggest nearly all coral reefs will be threatened by 2050 due to climate change. Warming waters can cause coral to bleach. This means that the coral expels all its algae and turns white. Eventually, the coral can die. Scientists at the Gates Coral Lab are studying coral species that have survived bleaching beside other dying colonies in an effort to create super coral. Kira Hughes is the manager for the Coral Assisted Evolution Project. She mostly investigates how to breed super coral. And that's our big question is why would one bleach right next to one that didn't bleach? So what we're doing is identifying those more resilient colonies, the ones that don't bleach, and then trying to reproduce those or condition those further to create super corals. So we're doing a human assisted evolution, which just means that we're trying to speed up the process. Forming events are coming too frequently and lasting for too long for them to be able to survive. For selective breeding, we're actually identifying ones that are already more resilient, ones that did not bleach previously, and mating those. And then we're hoping that their offspring will be even stronger than they are. Situated in the middle of Kaneohe Bay, the lab is the perfect place to dive into the science of coral. Crawford Drury is a postdoctoral researcher at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. He looks for genetic markers that could be behind the resilient coral. During a bleaching event, we can go out and tag a bunch of corals. We're already here. We can watch what's happening and monitor it. Kaneohe Bay is a really special place in the context of uh, resistant corals. So having that as a resource to study and branch off from is, is a great opportunity. The bay is rich with tough coral, and researchers wonder if its history has contributed to the resilience of the creatures. The bay's been through a lot. Runoff, pollution, invasive algae. After all that bad luck, perhaps only the strongest coral have survived. So we're taking advantage of the fact that we already have these stress-resistant corals in the bay and trying to see what's going to happen as we project this into the future, as we reach another generation that is having to deal with perhaps even worse conditions. Because they're right next to each other, we think that all of the other environmental variables that go into kind of dictating coral health are probably the same, so that's a really strong indicator that the difference is inside the coral animal. As rough and rocky as coral's exterior might seem, they're actually quite delicate organisms. Their survival relies on a fine dance between the different creatures that make up the coral. Polyps and a form of algae live inside the rocky exterior of the Montipora capitata coral. The algae share a symbiotic relationship with the coral by producing the energy it needs to survive. If the coral is stressed by warming, it will expel the algae and is left bleached. This makes the coral vulnerable, as the animal has lost a major food source. The coral might die, though not immediately. Scientists use sophisticated microscopes to observe this process with precision. Ariana Huffmeyer is a PhD candidate with the Institute, where much of her work involves this advanced laser microscope. So one of the things that we can do with this microscope is um, put a coral underneath the scope and raise the temperature on the scope itself, and we can simulate a bleaching event and watch how they respond. The healthy Montipora here on the right, you can see all the symbionts in red, and the coral tissue is really bright and healthy. And then over here on the left, you can see that most of the symbionts, there are still a few left, but most of the symbionts are missing from that tissue. Exactly, so you can't understand a coral reef without understanding individual coral colonies, and you can't really understand how a coral colony is behaving unless you look at the individual animals that make up that colony. So to understand how an entire reef all across Hawaii or across the Great Barrier Reef is responding to stress, we have to start at the level of the animal themselves. A Montipora capitata coral is a hermaphrodite. It begins its life by popping out of a wiggling polyp's mouth in the form of a small bundle packed with sperm and egg. The bundle eventually breaks to activate fertilization. From there, 
a larva forms resembling a swimming maggot. This larva swims around until it matures. It finds a place to settle, squish down, and metamorphosize into a new polyp that forms a rocky exterior of the coral. After hundreds of years of the cycle, coral form colonies. In thousands of years, colonies become reefs. But it's not just about understanding a reef, or a colony, or a coral, or even individual polyps. Breeding super coral is also about understanding the youngest of corals, and what influences the way they become majestic reefs. What factors affect how they grow, mature, and survive? That's why this lab is gathering coral egg and sperm by the boatload. In order to understand what's going on with coral, you need thousands of coral samples. And this lab is up for the task, even if it means sleepless nights under dark skies. This project is really looking at whether it's possible to scale up this type of sexual reproduction and propagation of corals through sexual reproduction. So we've gathered a ton of bundles from the field, more than we would do for a normal lab experiment. And we're trying to rear them in these much larger tanks so that we can get a higher number of embryos. And then we'll settle all of those once they develop into swimming larvae. Um, and then from there, practice some rearing techniques to see if we can get them to survive for a longer period of time after they've been settled. If climate change continues on its current path, the world's coral reefs will all probably die off. If they're going to be saved, the innovative research done on Coconut Island could be part of the solution. The future might be uncertain, but for the tireless researchers at the Gates Lab, the fight's not over yet.